Hey folks, it's Art Wolf. Welcome. We have an unboxing today of a game that I uh, became aware of quite a while ago, and as I've learned more about it, um, it has become more and more interesting looking to me. That game is Napoleon's Imperium. This is from Compass Games designer Andrew Rowland. Now, funny story, even though Andrew is in fact from Australia, and apparently Australian Design Group, the only Australian wargame publisher of whom I am aware, uh, has something to do with the publication, he has no relation to Harry Rowland, the designer of World in Flames and Empires in Arms and a bunch of other well-regarded things and offhand, the only other Australian war game designer I can think of. So Napoleon's Imperium started as Andrew's sort of personal project, and uh, over the years grew incredibly elaborate uh, to the tune of having a custom-built table and miniatures and all that stuff, and now he has brought it to us from Compass Games. So I should mention that Compass Games was kind enough to send me this, so thanks very much, Bill. I am super interested in having a look at this. This is in the standard Compass Games 2-inch box, and this is a multiplayer game, two, uh, two or six players. So I'm not sure if that means two or six players, or if that means two to six players. That's a good question. Um, I can think of a game that's basically two or six. That would be Here I Stand. You can kind of play it with three, and there's a two-player variant, but um, not that I think this is particularly similar to Here I Stand in any other important respect, um, but that's another example of a game where you really want either six people or two people. So let's uh, let's take a look at what we have here in the shrink wrap. And it's time to sharpen the knife. This knife has unboxed many games at this point. All right. Oof, okay, a lot of cards, a lot of dice. So we have, I think that said 20 10-sided dice, and that it looks, in fact, what we have here, 20 10-sided dice, uh, in thematically appropriate colors, which I always appreciate. And I always, I mean, I don't like, hate it when games don't do that, but it's a nice touch when they do. Uh, so we have three big decks of cards here. So we'll take a look at those in a moment. Okay. Um, Oh, well, this is this an errata sheet. Thank you for your purchase of Napoleon's Imperium. We hope it brings many hours of enjoyment. I do see a couple of errors that look no like noticeable. One of these is just a, like a typo, a spelling error. Um, so this doesn't look too bad. And it looks like yeah, they're just rules uh, errata, so not a big deal. All right, rule book. We have a very fancy looking almost Twilight Imperium-like, um, full color, um, sort of a satin finish paper, 40-page rule book. Here's uh, Andrew in 1995 with his custom-built Napoleon's Imperium. So this is going to tell the story of, uh, of all that. And then we have a table of contents, which looks pretty comprehensive, which is good. I am, of course, a fan of the period, and uh, I am... I would love to see a multiplayer Napoleonic game that is as good or better as the Napoleonic Wars from GMT, which has been my go-to Napoleonic multiplayer game to this point. I realize that some people might have expected me to say Empires in Arms, but A, I've never played Empires in Arms, and B, Empires in Arms is a giant project to play. So, okay. Uh, looks like a fairly non-conventionally structured rulebook. Um, which is fine. I want to see, get a sense of how many of the 40 pages are actual rules, and it looks like the great majority of them are. Uh, looks like we have a uh, battle point score chart, French and British team. Um, this looks, is this per battle, or is this per the entire campaign? Good question, I don't know. Okay. Game credits uh, designer Andrew Rowland, graphic design by Vlad Stanescu, um, game development partner Harry Rowland from Australian Design Group. I guess they're friends, even though no relation. Um, and game production by Compass Games. All right, and special acknowledgments and all that. Uh, there's an index too, which is nice, although the, honestly the index kind of looks like a repeat of the table of contents, so I'm not sure how useful that is. And then we have um, a card list, a card inventory, which is cool. So, and then we have some more cool pictures of uh, Andrew's 
home setup here. This is this is them all dressed up as presumably this is Gandalf in the middle here. So we have some displays. Let's put the rule book over here. Actually, these are okay. This is bigger than I thought. So we have what looks like a weather chart and uh, maybe some points that you could score in a battle um, and then a turn record track. Okay. And then we have player faction cards uh, for the British, the Ottomans, the Austrians, the French, the Prussians, the Spanish, the Nordic nations, which is presumably Denmark and Sweden in this context, um, and the Russian Empire. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking two of these, presumably uh, the, the, the Nordics and the Ottomans are like the NPC factions, I would think. Um, could be the Spanish too, for all I know. Uh, the Ottomans, while they were an important power in the period, uh, were not decisive in the Napoleonic Wars in any way, really. Okay. Okay, okay. This is uh, interesting, because this is something we haven't seen, I haven't seen from Compass in a little while. Uh, so here is the player aid cards, including rules in brief, special abilities charts, and then territory charts. And then we have two maps. Um, you have you are seeing correctly. These are not mounted maps. Now, I am positive that there's somebody out there who will have a big problem with this game not having mounted maps. But if it's a two map game, I, I know it's been done, but it's not particularly practical. Uh, I like the art. Um, of course, it's an area movement game. It looks like there's plenty of room in the areas, at least on this map. We'll look at the other one in a second, uh, which is a problem with some area movement maps. Take a look at places like northern Italy and, and France, and it looks like there's, generally speaking, still a decent amount of space in the territories. Um, like I said, I know that some people will probably squeal that this does not have mounted maps, but it's a two-map game. It's very difficult to do a two-map mounted game. And again, I know that it's been done, um, but it, it is not practical. And it's my personal opinion, as somebody who plays the vast majority of his stuff on maps that are not mounted, uh, that I would just as soon put plexi over an unmounted map than play with a mounted map. That's bad for photography uh, because of the glare off the plexi, uh, but it is completely equitable for actual play. So we have counter sheets here, and I think these are offshore printed counter sheets because they are shrink wrapped. Uh, these might actually be the um, might be the Compass Games new domestic counter printer, and I can feel these things coming loose from the sheets even in the shrink wrap. So this should be a comic delight for those who have seen me unbox these kinds of things before where the counters just explode out of the sheet, which is kind of what I'm expecting here. So I'm trying to be super gentle with this, uh, with the plastic. And the reason these are shrink wrapped is because of that, because they have a ten would have a tendency otherwise to fall out of the sheets in shipping, which is undesirable. Not a lot of companies do it, though. I know Decision does with some games. They did. They do it with the bigger games, at least. All right, so here we have what look like control markers for the Prussians and the Russians. And then... Okay... So these, so there's something being indicated here, I think, by the colored borders, and I don't know what that is. Um, but it looks like all these green things are Russian-controlled. Okay, we managed to extract that without blowing it up. The black is traditionally the Prussians. Purple is going to be... I have to admit I don't know who purple is supposed to be in this period. Um... 
the Nordic nations, I guess. That makes sense since there's not that many of them. There we go. There we go. Off we go. So let's put that in there. It's a little amazing that I haven't managed to do this already. Uh, these look, this is on a, a quite thick brown core stock. Not extraordinarily thick, but pretty thick. Um, I believe, and they look like bigger than 5 8 inch counters to me. They may actually be metric counters. That's possible um, since Australia is a civilized nation that uses the metric system. Um, so that's, that's plausible. Here we have what I presume to be our Austrians and our Spanish and our British and more Austrians and more. Oh, wow. That, that one just blew up. Look at that. Look at that. They just boom out, off of, out of the sheet. They go, well, we knew that was going to happen. Uh, I will clip, um, the corners on these presumably with a, uh, with my three millimeter corner rounder, I think if um, the corners are, if the counters will fit in it, it's a little narrow. Um, and the registration looks good, which is good because the um, these factors, whatever the factors mean, are kind of right up in the corners of the counters. So I might actually do this with a two millimeter. We'll see. And then we have our French here along with some more British. So uh, nice high quality counters, uh, thick box. Um, I am positive that there will be people who will object to the, the unmounted maps, but I personally do not have a problem with that in the context of a game this size. So let's have a look at the cards. Now what it looks like is that each power has its own deck. And I know that there are multiple decks, too. There's like a battle deck and an, and an event deck or something like that. So, and the cards are all mixed up. All right. So, captured commander. So, these look like the battle points cards. Because they're the same front and back. So, I think you just, like, pass these out as these things happen and score the points at the end, I think. And there's a ton of these. And the card stock is, uh, feels real nice, actually. Um, it's, it's thick, but not too thick. Sometimes I've seen cards um, that feel too thick, and, and therefore they feel very um, brittle. And they, they can have a tendency to chip. And I'm not getting that sense with these. All right, so this, this looks like events to me. Time to break out the whetstone. Okay, so now we have Spanish battle cards, Prussian battle cards, Russian battle cards, and they're all mixed up. So here's an Ottoman card, Imperium, God is Greater. Here is a Spanish Order of Isabella. So that looks neat. So these are the this is the battle deck then. This whole thing is the battle deck. Or the the individual battle decks, I suppose. That's what that looks like. And I but I saw Syrian Sandstorm. Yeah, that's an Ottoman battle card. Okay. And then it looks like there's more battle cards here. So is there an event deck? Maybe there isn't. A dull knife is a dangerous knife. Which means I'm probably going to cut myself. And if I do, I will edit it out. All right, more battle cards. French battle cards, British battle cards. Yeah, so it looks like these battle decks are the only decks other than these, like, objective cards. I'm going to call them objective cards until the, the reading the rules uh, informs me of what they are actually called. So, uh, I will bag the, car the cards off camera after we have done the video, but this has been an unboxing of brand new from Compass Games. And I'm gonna push this to the head of the unboxing queue because it's timely. Um, Napoleon's Imperium from Andrew Rowland and Compass Games. Uh, very interesting looking game. Um, really would like to get this to a table. 
Um, if it is, in fact, a 2-2-6 two, two, person game, there's a good chance I won't do that until later this year when we start reopening things. Hopefully that'll happen this year. So let's hope. Um, but in the meantime, it looks very interesting. And I'm, I'm also wondering if there is a vassal module for it so that we can try it. Uh, multiplayer online, which would be awesome. So, Napoleon's Imperium, thanks for watching. If you have found the video valuable or useful or entertaining, please give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe to the channel and click the little bell icon to get notified when new content comes out. If you'd like to support our Wolf Slayer, there are links to the Patreon and merch store in the video description. Until next time, thanks again for watching and happy wargaming. <laughs>